Here's an idea. YouTube channels end because they want you to replace them. I'm thinking a lot about Zay Frank because I loved Zay Frank. Uh, link below to a history of Zay Frank so I don't have to explain it because I've gotten complaints that I sound like a Wikipedia. Zay Frank was a vlogger and he revolutionized vlogging for a lot of people. He did two runs of his show. The first one in 2006 when I was going to college and they blocked YouTube because they sucked. And the second one, um, when I was on the internet and sad. So I really needed a voice like that. And that's probably why it's affected me and stuck with me so much. But I was going through and I'm like, what happened to Zay Frank? But Zay Frank, he would do this thing in his videos. He would talk like really fast. And most of what he did was collaborative. So someone sent in a question and he would start reading the question, but then he would get off talk it and talk about how like, he wanted to do a video with ice cream, but he started doing ice cream before he set up the camera. And ice cream waits for no man. This is getting, this is getting so soupy. I should just, I should. It's taking this heater forever to turn off, but I found tarot cards in the other room. I did not know we had tarot cards. Oh, that's the wrong way. Uh, would you like a tarot card reading? Your card is... The sword crown. You're gonna stab a crown. I'm sure that means a lot to you. When will this thing so Zay Frank was very much so about audience participation. He took questions, he gave advice, he related his own life advice, mixed in to the questions, and then he had an artist that would illustrate people's dreams, and he had other performance artists that would tell people what to do, and then they would set them in for contests, like make somebody laugh who you've never made laugh and get a picture or take a picture with your friend while you're both upside down, but hold the camera upside down, so it's a right side up, upside down picture. One more card. Le Empereur is your thing. This is, this is gonna be a great YouTube video, I think. They were fun, but I never actually did any of them, barely. I did a finishing stamp. We should take out my finishing stamp. This is my finishing stamp. That looks pretty good. It's a mole. It's a mole jumping through the air. I made it myself. It's because things take too long and try to get too perfect. So the fishing staff is like, no, it's done. Finished. The idea is you suck at things when you think of them. And so you have to get ideas out as fast as possible so they don't. So I'm rehashing Zay Frank's videos. The point is Zay Frank abruptly, seemingly ended. Uh, in about the middle of his run, he mentions that he started to do pieces for BuzzFeed. He did the Angry Baby song. And eventually he started doing the true facts things, which Nerdwriter colorfully referred to as lying about animals. The truth about the whole thing was Zay Frank felt like he did it. He vlogged for a year similar to his first run in 2006 with A Show. So A Show and The Show were both around a year's length where he would talk to people. But the thing is, audience participation dropped, views dropped, so he moved on to BuzzFeed, which now he's the president of. And uh, I guess kind of happy about, though he does like nothing on social media. Last th thing he did on social media was complain about the president. So I was going through my subscription the other day, and I was going through all of the little subscriptions I have and seeing when the last they made the video and if they're still making videos. And some people just dropped off the face of the earth. They came back for one or two videos. A couple like Mika Kitty are very clear about what they're doing with their life. She's a musician. She's going around the country touring. It's less about the vlog now. And the thing with like looking through all of these people is I wasn't sure why I followed them or subscribed in the first place. The answer has to be that like they vlogged or collabed with, collabed with someone, but I don't remember. I don't remember watching a bunch of these people and now they've just quit. And I'm like, I don't know if I should feel sad about this. Here is where Idea Channel comes in. Idea Channel was a phenomenal success. The more they put videos, the more they would change. They learned, they always had like subscribers and viewers. There was no weird backroom drama. There's no buyouts. And when they got to the end of their run, they decided to put out videos that would tell people how to make Idea Channel videos. They wanted to share the philosophy. This is enough for us. Now you can have it. And this is a thing that's so, few channels get to do that Zay Frank didn't, didn't get to do. But the more I think about it, the more I think that this is what Zay Frank wanted too. Where he left off, other things came in. There's the art assignment, which has a ton of real life assignments for you to do, like put a dollar on the street and watch and wait until somebody picks it up. What made Zay Frank so good is that he was vulnerable. 
He was a man who struggled with depression and tried to share with people how he dealt with it and tried to deal with it in a way in these videos and things that would make him happy and things that would make his friends happy. I visited a couple of his videos and just about every video has someone saying that they missed him, that they wished he was back, that he wished he was still doing that thing. But those people could do it too. All it takes is to be vulnerable and out there and willing to put up stupid videos on the internet. But they're not stupid. They're vulnerable. They explore yourself and your audience and hopefully the people that watch it will like it. Sometimes I get a video idea and I can't write it down. I can't script it out. And I know that's a video that I have to explore in front of a camera. This was one of those videos. I feel like Zay Frank scripted out everything he did, but he scripted out a kind of free thought meditation. Where idea channel, the whole concept is to connect two disparate things and talk about what philosophies they have in common and to convince you of one thing or another, like Mario being surreal. And they had communities, they had fantastic communities. And I don't know how to get to some of those people that feel like me. I reach out uh, to those people. So here's a video on Zay Frank and Idea Channel and how they wanted you to continue their work. And how they want you to think on their own. Uh, Idea Channel explicitly and perhaps even Zay Frank explicitly, though maybe we weren't paying attention. So maybe it's worth another watch. Or then again, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just worth this. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for making it to the end. Um, I'd also like to thank Idea Channel and Zay Frank and all of the YouTube channels and all the people that decided to put up a video on YouTube for a while and that I enjoyed and that even if your videos are now mysteriously private, thanks for sharing for a time. And I enjoyed it and I'm sorry you had to leave, but I think it will continue and it can continue if we just value the personal connection. How about down below you put four things that you like about yourself. That's a classic. I would love to hear that. And I'll, I guess I'll do it too. Uh, huh? <laughs> I think I forgot how to do this. <laughs> what do I do, answer it? <laughs> Don't read the book. Use it. Use it how you see fit. They call it nomadic thought. That has become the model for lots of my work, and so also Idea Channel. I want these videos to be things that you do more than simply videos that you like or subscribe to, though I want to be clear, it's also rad that you have done that as well.